talking about torque, rotational equilibrium, rigid body equilibrium, I'm gonna show you something really cool. I learned this from someone else, so I didn't make it up. So here I have a Lego block right there. You see that? And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be Lego, it just has to be a block that I can put on a board. And so what's gonna happen if I push this uh, from the bottom down, or close to the bottom right here? Let's see what happens. Did you see that? It slid. Okay, now what happens if I push the block from the top up here or near the top? It tipped over. Now, is there some point, where do I push where it stops sliding and starts tipping? That's the point I wanna find. So let's just push, slide, and I, I'm not doing this completely level because I'm, hold, I'm holding the board. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, slide, slide. Oh, it's just about to tip right around there. You see that? So if I measure that distance, I can use this to calculate the coefficient of friction between the block and the, and the board here. So that's what we're doing. We're pushing the block at different uh, heights to find out where it tips over. Does that make sense? Okay, let's find that. Let's use this to calculate the coefficient of friction. So I made up some values here uh, just so we can make it more realistic. Suppose I have a block right there, I'm gonna push it with the force and it's just at that point, the transition point between sliding and tipping. And I picked the mass of the block, probably not gonna need that. I have the height of the total block, the width and the height that it's pushed. So at this point, we can draw a rigid body force diagram for the block. Now, what's interesting about this is that uh, we have forces on it. We have the gravitational force, we have the friction force, and we have the pushing force and the normal force. So that's four forces, right? And it's in equilibrium, even if it moves at a constant speed or right when it's about to tip. But the problem is where? Where are those forces applied on the bottom? Because it has a, a larger contact area. We don't have one point. So we, we're gonna go for the edge and we're gonna put those as it tips, you'll notice if I push right there, it's gonna tip like this. So the contact point that's gonna be in contact is gonna be right there. So we're gonna apply both the normal and the friction force right there. Okay, so let's draw our, our rigid body diagram. Here's my block. There's that contact point right there. Now, I, I have the gravitational force. It's going to act at the center of mass, which is right here. And remember, Gravity acts on all parts of the object, but we can represent that force, all of those forces as one single force acting at the center mass. Then I have the pushing force right here. I'll just call that FP. And we know that's the point that it's located at. And then I have the normal force right there. And then I have the friction force right there. Okay, so at that instant, it's in equilibrium. So I have the following three equations are true. F net, let's call this the x direction, and not the y direction. F net in the x direction is equal to zero. F net in the y direction is equal to zero. And finally, the net torque about some point O is equal to zero. Now that's the one that we have to think about because we have to pick that point O about which we'd calculate the torques. Um, so let's just write down these two equations and then we'll pick that. So the net forces in the x direction are not too hard. I can say F uh, push minus, the, that's an F friction, minus F friction is equal to zero. Those are the only two forces acting in the X direction. The only two forces in the Y direction are N minus MG equals zero. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know the coefficient of friction, but I'm trying to find the maximum coefficient of friction um, to prevent that thing from tipping over or right at that equilibrium point. So we're looking at the maximum coefficient of friction. So F friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Remember, it's usually less than or equal to, but we're looking at that maximum point, so it's equal to. Okay, so I don't know the force I push with. I don't know the friction force. I don't know the normal force. I don't know the coefficient. It looks like I have too much stuff. And in fact, I do. I have too many things I don't know. Um, well, actually I can solve for the normal force. That's pretty easy. N equals mg. And again, I want to caution you, right? This comes up all the time. This is only true in certain situations. Don't think the normal force is equal to the weight. 
Happens to be a lot of the times, but not always. Okay, we got that. So I can write this, the friction force is equal to mu s times mg, and that's that coefficient of friction. And up here, I can make the relationship that fp is equal to uh, mu s mg. Okay, so now I need, to I need to find something. I need to find an expression for this. Okay, let's use the torque equation to find that. Now, the important part about picking the point about which you calculate the torque is that we have torque as R F sine theta. So if I pick a location such that that's the torque arm, the force, and that's the angle between R and F. And so if I pick a location such that R or theta is zero, then they'll have no torque and they won't appear in the torque equation. You can see where I'm going to pick the torque is right there. That's the point I want to pick. Because if I pick that point, then the friction and the normal force will not be in the torque equation. And then I'll just have this force and that force, and I can actually solve for that force and plug it in over here. So let's write that down, torque net O. So now to calculate the torque, I can use a different version. I can say uh, torque equals R perpendicular F. That's the same thing as this. Mathematically, it's the same. So this is the, for, the, the arm that's perpendicular to the force. We don't have to actually use the full arm. So right here, the gravitational force, the torque is going to be the gravitational force times that distance, which is W over 2. Now, that gravitational force all by itself would make this rotate counterclockwise. So I'm going to call that a positive torque. So this is going to be equal to mg, the force, and the torque arm, the perpendicular torque arm, is w over 2. Now this torque is going to make it rotate clockwise, so that would be a negative torque. And its perpendicular distance is this, right? You could, you, you could go ahead and find that uh, distance and this uh, angle right there, but you're going to get the same thing. Trust me. So I'm just going to use this distance right here, and that's y. This is going to be minus fp times y, and that should be equal to 0 because it doesn't rotate. So from this, I can solve for fp. fp is going to be mgw over 2y. Now I can put that in up here, and I get mgw over 2y. Oh, look at that. I told you the mass wouldn't matter. I told you, but you didn't listen. Okay. Um, and I can, oh, the G cancels too. It doesn't matter if I do this on Earth, the Moon, or Mars. Uh, it's going to be the same. So now I'm done. Mu S is equal to W over 2Y. Okay, so let's you do that just for this made up case right here, just so I have a number. Everyone likes numbers. Well, I don't, but. I know everyone else does. So I said W was 0.02, so it's going to be 0.02, enter, and then I divide by 2, duh, and then I divide by Y, which is 0.6. And I get 0.167. No units, that's S U S it's a coefficient. Okay, now let's just think about what would happen if the coefficient of friction was greater. Okay, if the coefficient of friction is greater, then the ratio of the weight to the friction force is going to be greater, so I'm going to get a greater backwards pushing force. And that means that uh, in order to get it to slide, I'm going to need to push harder. And if I have to push harder, it's going to be harder to rotate. Right? It's, so I'm going to have to I would, I, with, if I push hard to me, more torque. So in order to decrease the torque so it doesn't rotate, because I want to counteract this gravitational torque right here, I need to push lower. So with a lower, uh, with a higher friction, you need to push lower, which is exactly what this says, right? If this is greater, then that has to be lower, right? Because I'm dividing by it. And that makes sense. Also, you'll notice that if it's wider, you can push up a lot higher, right? Because you will have uh, 
Oh, you need a lower coefficient of friction in order to be able to push it. I feel like I'm, I'm talking in circles here. Okay, let's just stop there. I think it's a fun problem. So, great way to measure the coefficient of static friction by finding out where to push on that thing. The end.